Hey, what's up? This is Caleb with School of Motion, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the loop expression. Now, if you're new to After Effects, the loop expression may sound a little bit scary, but it's really a very easy way to loop keyframe values over and over again in After Effects without having to copy and paste keyframes. It can save you a lot of time. So if you're ready to learn something new, let's hop in. So before we get going too far here, I want to let you know that you can download the free project files by just going over to School of Motion. Just go to the blog post. You can find a link in the description of this video, and then you can download the project files so you can follow along with this tutorial. So if you are new to expressions or After Effects in general, then you may not be familiar with the loop expression. But all the loop expression is, is a simple, small snippet of code that tells After Effects to repeat a process again and again. And there's different ways in which you can modify the way in which After Effects does this, but I'll explain all of those things in this tutorial. So right here, we have the most simple type of loop property. It's the loop out property with no loop type on the inside. That one doesn't make sense right now, but it will in just a little bit. So basically, as you can see here, we have a simple sequence where over the course of one second and 11 frames, so 35 frames, um, this little dot here goes around this little figure eight. So it just kind of goes around the figure eight and then it comes to rest. Now, typically, if you wanted to continue this dot along the figure eight path, you would have to copy the keyframes and paste them here and paste them and paste them and do that for however long your composition or sequence is. Now, that is not necessarily ideal if you want to very quickly create uh, looping backgrounds or uh, a looping foreground element like this dot here. So uh, what you can do is use the loop expression to have it continue along that path forever. So to set an expression, all you have to do is hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac and hit the stopwatch that you're trying to uh, adjust. And then we're just going to type in loop out and then we'll do open parentheses, close parentheses, and then semicolon. So now if we play this back, you'll see that the dot goes around this infinity loop basically for infinity. And that's really the essence of what the loop expression does in a very kind of practical context. But there's a lot of different ways in which the loop expression can be manipulated to do different things. So right now we're using the loop out expression and the loop out expression basically continues your animation beyond the last keyframe or your out keyframe or your out point. Uh, there's also an expression called the loop in expression. So if you just type in loop in, you'll see if we play this back, it will only animate once and then it'll stop. And that's because it is wanting to loop everything before the first keyframe. So if we go ahead and select all of our keyframes and drag these out here, we can just drag them to, let's say, the three second mark. We can go ahead and hit play and you'll see that it loops until it hits that first keyframe and then it stops right there at the end. So that's all there really is to the loop in and the loop out expression with no loop type modifiers to it. Now, this is a loop in its most basic form. It just basically continues a sequence of keyframes forever. But there's actually four different types of loop modifiers in After Effects. So the first type is the cycle, and this is a representation of the cycle. So if I go back in here and type in loop out, open parentheses, open quotes, I'm gonna type in cycle, close quotes, close parentheses, semicolon. And then I'm going to go ahead and drag these keyframes to the very beginning where we had them at the very beginning of our composition. So as you can see, because we have the term cycle in there, it actually just loops the same animation over and over again. But if you take cycle out, it'll do the exact same. We also have a loop called the ping pong loop. So I'm going to hop over to a different composition here. And you'll notice that we have just a simple character here. I'm going to go ahead and play this back so you can see what happens. It's really quick, uh, but basically he just kind of throws a disco pose. Now we want to turn this disco pose into an actual disco dance. And if you know a typical disco dance, they kind of like throw their hands up and come right back. And it's kind of the same move over and over again. So in this instance, we can actually use the ping pong loop expression to loop the animation to go from here back to here and back and forth, just like a disco guy. And I hope you enjoyed those dance moves because that's literally as good as my dance moves get. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag and drop this disco composition into an entirely new composition by dropping it onto the composition button here. So now we have this disco to composition. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna scrub to the 12 frame mark. So the 12 frame mark is our keyframe. It's where our animation is at its height. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and right click on this disco composition, go to time, enable time remapping, and I'm gonna set a keyframe for the 12th frame. So if we go ahead and zoom out, we have to delete the last keyframe if we're gonna do a looping animation. And that's just because if we don't do that, it's gonna to try to basically loop the entire composition, including the very last keyframe, which basically means it's not gonna loop anything. So go ahead and delete that final keyframe. So we're gonna hold down Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, hit that stopwatch, and we're gonna type in loop out, open parentheses, quotation mark, ping pong, I kid you not, uh, close quotation mark, close parentheses, and semicolon. So now if we play this back, you'll see our disco guy dances. So look at our little guy go. He's just dancing and dancing forever uh, on an endless loop for the rest of his life. Kind of sounds like a Black Mirror episode, but it perfectly illustrates how to use the ping pong expression. So um, the next two loops that I want to talk about is the offset and the continue loop. So I'm going to hop over to another composition here. So the continue and the offset loop kind of do similar things, but not exactly. But I think it's best if we go ahead and juxtapose them side by side here. So the continue loop, if you, if you kind of look at this top dot here and we play it back, you can see that it had a little bit of momentum and then it just kind of kept that momentum. Basically, what the continue loop does is it continues with the exact value of the speed at the point in which the last keyframe ended. So I'm going to go ahead and select our continue dot here, hit the U key. And the best way that we can look at this is if we select our keyframes here and go to the graph editor. And we are looking at the speed graph, not the value graph. So if we go ahead and zoom in to our very last keyframe here, you can see that it is moving at a rate of basically 50 pixels a second at the very end to the left. So it, it basically kind of comes on really quickly, slows down, moves back a little bit, and it ends at about 50 pixels a second. So what it is doing, it is continuing this expression forever. And what you can do if you actually go in here to our drop down menu, and you go ahead and select this show post expression graph. So this is everything after the expression. It will show you the continued value of our loop out continue expression. So as you can see, it moves at a rate of 48.38 pixels a second once it ends on the last keyframe. So if I go ahead and play this back with us watching, you can see that it just kind of continues at that 48 pixel a second rate going to the left. So the loop offset actually does something a little different. It basically adds to whatever value was introduced by the keyframes. So for example, in our scene here, you can see that where this loop should stop, and if it was a normal loop, it would basically cycle from here to here over and over again. It actually builds on itself and continues moving in the direction of whichever keyframe modifier you have. It could continue to rotate. It could continue to move to the right. It could continue to move to the left. It could continue spinning in circles all over your composition, but it basically just adds to the value of your final keyframe. So for example, I could go in here and I could offset the position a little bit. And now this will basically, every time it moves forward, it will, will kind of loop around in a circle and come back. And if we play this back, it, it'll better illustrate. So basically it just kind of dips down and kind of spins, but it continues to spin along the exact same path. So let me show you how this offset loop can be used in like a day-to-day -day motion graphics context. So if we go over here to this walk cycle composition, uh, you'll see that this little guy basically, it's just like any other walk cycle. He, uh, he's walking, but he's not actually going anywhere. And we're using a very uh, defined path for him to walk on, basically the point of impact or the floor in which his feet are impacting the ground uh, is unchanging. And so basically what I want to do is I want to animate this walk cycle in this disco here without having to set a keyframe for every single time he takes a step or having to figure out basically through eyeballing it or math or whatever, um, where the final keyframe should be over here. So for example, if we kind of zoom in here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And basically our walk cycle is exactly one second long. And, and that's just important to remember. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and go to time, enable time, remapping, and go ahead and set a keyframe. And like before, we're gonna go ahead 
and delete our final keyframe. And let me take this moment right here to say that sometimes you may have to go back one keyframe before you set your final keyframe here. So we set our, our last keyframe at the one second mark here. You may have to sometimes go ahead and set a keyframe one frame before that. It just depends on your composition. It's kind of an error in After Effects or it's kind of just the way After Effects is. Uh, and so just keep that in mind. If you have a loop that feels like it's one frame off, uh, go ahead and go back one frame in your time remapping expression and then delete this final keyframe here. I'm gonna pretend like this is gonna work, but if it doesn't work, we'll go back and uh, do exactly what I just said. So um, now we have basically uh, just a single uh, one second uh, walk cycle here, and we wanna make it loop. So I'm gonna hold down option here, and I'm gonna just type in our very, very simple loop out expression. And I don't have to include cycle because cycle is the default loop type. And so now we have just basically uh, Disco Larry here, and he's just basically kind of moonwalking forever, but we don't want that. We want him to actually move forward in the composition. So what I'm gonna do here is figure out the point in which his foot first hits the ground. So I'm gonna zoom into our composition here, and we'll zoom right here where his front foot is, and I'm gonna create a new ruler. So if you hit Command R, your rulers will pop up, at the top of the screen and you just have to click and drag from the top of the composition here to the base of his foot. You could just kind of perfect it right, right about there. And then I'm also gonna drag from the left side of the screen here to where we create this target. Basically, we want this to be exactly where this foot is the entire time. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit P for position and set a keyframe. So I'm gonna move forward to the point in which the foot is furthest back. So this keyframe right here. So we're at the 13 frame mark, and I'm gonna go ahead and drag the X position of our walk cycle here to where that back foot lines up perfectly uh, with our target. So I'll go ahead and move it to right about there, and we go ahead and zoom out. So if we play this back here, you'll see that uh, the rate is really looking good for the first step, and then he just kind of moonwalks. But we basically want to continue at that same speed forever. and as you guessed it, we're gonna use the offset loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit P for position and hold down the option key or alt key on a PC and hit that stopwatch and I'm gonna type loop out, open parentheses, quotation marks, and then we're gonna type in offset, quotation marks, close parentheses, semicolon, and click away. So now if we go ahead and play this, you'll see that the keyframe value is added to the guy and he just kind of continues to walk off screen. And again, he'll just keep walking in an endless loop forever and ever and ever. So that's kind of a real world example of how to use the loop expression in an everyday animation context. Now, I'm sure you can think of a million and five different ways in which you can use the loop expression to help you in your everyday animation projects. But just know that you know walk cycles, looping backgrounds, things like that are really uh, best tailored for using the loop expression. Basically, if you are having to copy and paste a sequence of keyframes, you should be using the loop expression in some way. So that's not all there is to know about the loop expression. The next thing that I wanna to talk to you about is loop expression argument modifiers. Now that may sound insane, but it's actually a really easy concept to understand. So I have a composition set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and play it back so you can kinda of see what's going on. So basically, as you can see, uh, the very beginning starts with the record spinning really quickly and then it kinda of goes at this constant rate. And so let's say that we wanted this record to continue at that constant rate past this last keyframe. So what we have to use is an argument modifier and it's really easy to understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold down option and hit the stopwatch here and I'm gonna type in loop out, open parentheses, quotation marks, and I'm gonna type in offset. So we are going to use the offset, which um, is the loop modifier that continues from the very last point. Remember, it adds value uh, to whatever property you're adjusting. And I'm gonna type in one, close parentheses, and semicolon. So what this is about to tell After Effects is we are going to loop out this set of keyframes using an offset loop the one that adds values to the end of the last keyframe. But this one here is basically gonna tell After Effects that we only want to loop 
one keyframe back from the out keyframe. So if we go ahead and play this back here, you can see that it continues to loop forever at a constant rate. So if we went in and added in, let's say a two here, After Effects would basically add in this keyframe and this keyframe to the very last uh, loop out keyframe here. So what would happen is it would speed up, it would play at a constant rate, and now it's gonna speed up again, and then it's gonna play at a constant rate. And that's because After Effects is going back two keyframes, but we only want it to go back one keyframe. So I'll go ahead and just hit uh, one here. So that is really all there is to argument modifiers. So you can do the same thing with the loop in expression. So if I change this out to in, and then drag these three keyframes over here, just a little bit, basically what's gonna happen is uh, it's gonna loop between these two keyframes and it's not gonna be smooth, it's not gonna be pretty, um, but it will just basically loop between these two keyframes. And I'll just go ahead and play this back here so you can see it just kind of spins and then it goes to that constant rate between these two keyframes. So these argument modifiers are a really great tool to use if you have something that has some different values, but it needs to go to a constant rate over a certain amount of time. Or it, let's say if you had a ball that was starting really high and it comes in, it bounces, but you want it to bounce at a constant height, you could use uh, an argument modifier to, to kind of keep it at that constant height. Uh, there's a lot of potential uses, but, but just know that you do have that in your repertoire. So the last two types of loops that I wanna talk about are the duration loops. And the duration loops are basically um, just slight variations of the loops that we've already been working with. So what we've been using up to this point are keyframe based loops, basically loops that say um, to loop between, you know, like this last modifier that we just used, this argument modifier, we said loop between this keyframe and this keyframe forever. Now, the duration loops actually will tell After Effects to loop between certain periods in time. So for example, I'm gonna hold down Option on my Mac or you can do Alt on a PC and type in loop out duration, open parentheses, quotation marks, and I'm gonna do ping pong, quotation marks, comma, and I'm gonna do one, close parentheses, semicolon. So what this is telling After Effects to do is basically ping pong back and forth. Remember ping pong is the loop expression that will do all of the keyframes, then go back and repeat the keyframes, then go back and forth forever and forever, um, just like a ping pong ball. Now, what this is specifically going to do is only go back one second be from our final keyframe and loop that forever. So basically we're at the two second and 18 frame mark here. What After Effects is gonna do is go back to the one second 18 frame mark and it is going to uh, set kind of its own virtual keyframe there forever. And it is going to repeat basically back and forth between these two points forever and ever past the final keyframe. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this back here so I can kind of illustrate what I'm talking about. So it spins on, now it's gonna spin backwards and it's gonna spin forwards every one second. So uh, if I kind of extend this here to where it plays back a little bit longer, we can get a better idea of what is going on. So it spins on, goes backwards one second, forwards one second, backwards one second, forwards one second, and it'll just continue to do that over and over again. Now there's a lot of potential uses uh, that you could use this very specific um, loop out duration uh, loop for. Uh, I find the keyframe ones to be of more value because um, you know, in After Effects, you, your durations change. You know, sometimes you wanna move your keyframe over one frame and that will completely throw off your entire loop if you're using the duration loop, but but just know that it's there. You know there may be a certain context where you may want to use it, and there you go. You know you can use it in some way. Uh, it also works, like I said before, uh, with the loop in. So you could do loop in duration ping pong, and that would basically loop between one second points back and forth over and over again, and then it would end on the final keyframe. And that's all there is to it. If you want to learn more about using the loop expression, go check out the blog post over on School of Motion, we've also put together a PDF guide that will help you whenever you are using the loop expression in the future. And then you can also download some of the project files used in this tutorial so you can mess around with the loop expression on your own. This has been Caleb Ward. We'll see you next time.